I've kind of taken a break from the drill press and bandsaw stand because I promised my daughters that I would build them a dollhouse. So I went to the lumber store to pick up some lumber to actually try to fulfill this promise. Now in the past I tried to actually fulfill this obligation and it did not go so well. My skill set was a little bit lower than it is now and definitely my uh, tool chest was a lot more empty. So I'm hoping to revisit this idea and actually make good on my promise. Now um, I really like my MFT table as you can see here it makes it very convenient to unload material from off of the truck as you see me doing here super nice now here you know I'm gonna be using my track saw so I got that stuff out there and they get pretty dusty because I don't take care of them like I should but I'm just using my compressed air to get that cleaned up and now I'm gonna get my Makita 118 inch rail down so that I can go ahead and get ready to uh, just trim off that factory edge. I'm using the TSO guide rail to get that 90 degree cut. And since I don't have a lot of places to store it, I put it back up there real high. Now I'm getting my parallel guide system made by TSO to get ready to make some uh, consistent uh, cuts, cross cuts. First I'm going to screw up this edge using my Festool TS55. Now I'm measuring to make sure that um, I'm getting the appropriate depth for the sides. So with this particular setup, I'm actually using the parallel guide system in conjunction with the guide rail square, just you know, as an added measure of uh, accuracy. I really like the parallel guide system. However, you know, there's three different sizes. You have the 20 inch, the 30 inch, and the 50 inch. And if I, if I, you know, you having one makes you want to have all of them. Let me just say it like that, because it's a very uh, convenient piece of kit. However, as you see me right now, I'm just kind of fiddling with getting it all set up. And the TSO Parallel Guides, it's so, I don't want to say separately, but basically you don't get everything you need to set it up with the basic kit. You have to buy the connectors that attach to your rail separately and those can range from like $43.95 all the way up to um, hundred. You can use the actual guide rail square which is $179 respectively with the parallel guide system. Now here you see me making the cut with the my first side cut with the TS, uh, with the uh, Festool track saw and this is where I actually made my first mistake and obviously when you're building, mistakes compound themselves. So at this point, I should have attempted to do my dados across this sheet of plywood going the eight foot length so that all my dados would line up with each of my individual sides and um, the center pieces of this build. At this point in time, obviously, I don't, I didn't know that. And as you can see, I'm wearing my uh, face shield with the respirator mask that's just because I didn't feel like breathing in the dust today and um, it kind of gave me uh, two modes of protection in one by using both the face shield and the mask my wife actually pushed me to get this a while back and I bought it off of Amazon I don't know probably for like a hundred something dollars just to kind of try to protect the lungs and I noticed too you know audio gets pretty pretty um, bad when you're running the actual air purifier at the same or the air filtration system when um, you're in the shop and recording. It's expensive to have quality tools, but it's it's a great help to basically have things that basically help you to be uh, precise and consistent with your cuts. Obviously, a table saw is great 
for getting repeatable cuts, but you know, cut down this full four by eight sheet of plywood with this uh, parallel guide system and a track saw is, um, is pretty much a dream. So now that I'm finished making those basic cuts, I go ahead and get rid of my foam under uh, foam mat that I use to actually um, cut into so that I don't just destroy my top. And here's where I realized my mistake. I'm trying to use both of my bench dog fences to try to wedge all my pieces together so that I can try to do a um, dado across all the pieces. However, um, eventually I'll figure out that um, either I'm going to have to go through the rail or I'm not going to be able to complete that actual routing in this uh, particular setup. And then also, too, with the table being so wide, I would probably have to be up on top of the table in order to uh, maybe make some of the other the dado cuts just because of how much room I have to um, access. So as you see here, I'm just trying to make sure everything's kind of squared up against both of those fences. And I think I'm starting to realize that it's not going to work out. Oh, and so look, the DeWalt track saw comes to the party now. So here I'm pulling out my DeWalt rail. And the reason why I'm pulling that out is because I actually purchased a router um, attachment for this rail I mean, a long time ago, back when I originally bought the track saw on the rails, thinking, oh, I might, you know, use it someday. And um, I didn't even have a DeWalt router at that time. Well, eventually I did purchase a DeWalt router and I've never used the two together. As a matter of fact, for this particular project was the first time I opened that router attachment. And so I thought that it would be a good idea to use it on this project. Now, as you see, I got the long rail up there, the 102 inch, because I was going to actually use it to... Um, complete the um, the dado down all of these pieces of plywood however I realized quickly that I'm gonna have to go through the fence at the far end and the other thing I realized is I'm not gonna be able to square it up as I'm able to with the small rail because as I said in a previous video I'm not taking the uh, cut strip off of one of the sides of my 102 inch rail so I can't use the um, bench dogs rail guide on that rail so I'm, I'm stuck using this uh, 42 inch right now I could use the 59 inch but it's still not gonna go across all the pieces so now I'm just kinda working out in my mind trying to figure out okay how am I actually going to do this um, dado but as you can see you see the setup you see the little adapter for the router it's got a plunge base and then you know the um, bench dogs rail square attached so here I'm using the TSO uh, triangle or it's basically a square is what they call it that is clearly one of my favorite tools because it's so nice for layout and all of these types of things all right so I've realized my mistake so I'm gonna pull out the trusty TSO triangle or square however you want to call it and what I'm trying to do here is I already have my marks for where my dados are going to be but now I'm trying to line it up and using the, the exact width of the plywood that I'm using, which is the 18 millimeter, to try to mark both sides. Here I'm just checking my spacing, making sure that um, each of these sections are going to be um, adequate for um, the use case that it's being created for. If I had it to do again, what I would probably do if I don't remember to actually do the dado across the whole sheet of plywood, I would actually cut that piece of wood that I'm using down because it was kind of difficult to balance with the TSO um, triangle to you know keep it straight and parallel. But I just used it basically as a guide on the, the end closest to me. 
Now I'm actually scribing lines all the way across to the uh, second sheet up and I'm going to use those lines to carry this process all the way down because, you know, it seemed like it makes sense. Or it seems like it makes sense. So my goal with these um, daily builds, if you will, is basically just to try to you know, work as hard as I can to get better at building and to become more confident with um, using my tools and, um, event and also to get a lot more practice with editing. As you can see with this particular video, I'm doing a couple things that I haven't done before because I'm, I'm playing with the software that I use and also going back and forth between a Mac and a PC, just trying to find that right mix of uh, what works for me. Eventually, the videos will be um, a lot more bite-sized, if you will, but um, I'm just trying to get a better grasp of how to communicate a story of what I'm doing without um, there being these major gaps. And right now, that's making longer videos, but eventually, as I get better at editing and storytelling, which is, uh, and, and communicate my ideas, then you'll see that the videos will become a lot more manageable, a lot more bite-sized and um, to the point. So here, I was basically saying to the camera that I was gonna make a story stick to basically reference off of the longer bench uh, dog's fence to tell me where I should place the router so that I could hit those dados um, accurately or the, the marks that I have for the dado. So here I pulled out a two by four and I was like, ah, oh, that's too thick. Let me get something that's a little bit uh, thinner. It'll be a little bit um, easier to use. So I decided to go over to my little makeshift table saw cabinet with my Milwaukee M18 table saw. And I'm gonna use that to cut down the same 18 mil plywood, cut down some pieces to use to as story sticks. Always trying to work on those camera angles. Eventually, I'll get it. So I pulled out my face shield here because uh, this table saw, you know, it throws a lot of stuff right back in your face. So I decided to go ahead and use that. I got tired of wearing that whole um, respirator apparatus and just went with the simple face shield here. So now I'm marking out the locations, creating this story stick. Now as I'm doing it, eventually I'm gonna realize that I'm gonna need at least two story, well, really four story sticks because I would want it on both sides to make it, um, you know, to, to support both sides of what I'm trying to cut. But then also, um, I needed the two different lengths, the longer dado and the shorter one because it's basically two dados going across um, these sheets of plywood here. So here I'm using my INCRA um, angle rule to mark the, the uh, piece of wood on both sides and off camera I'm using my Milwaukee M18 miter saw to cut them to the proper length. So you see the final product of the first one and wait for it. Now this looks good if you're going to use a track saw, looks outstanding. However, this is where inexperience comes in because now I'm realizing, wait a minute, the router and its accessory has to fit in there. And then look at it. Look at where the router bit is. I did not address that. 
All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up right here and we'll pick back up in my next video. Thanks for taking time to watch. Be safe. Take care.